Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Kinect's Robot Build series. We are on episode 8 right now, and I won't make any guarantees, but this might end up being the last episode. I will be more sure of that when it ends. So, where we left off, I said I was going to totally redo the robot arm again, and the only thing left right now is this section of it. I plan on keeping most of this, but I do kind of want to get rid of the counterweight because it makes it just too heavy. So hopefully I could find a way to make it stable some other way. I plan on making the robot arm kind of like the first configuration that I had, where the first joint was a rotating joint and the second one was also rotating. The only problem with that arm is that it was very unstable and I thought it would be too hard to turn around. So with this one, which I plan on putting right here where this rod is, I would like to make it be really tall, the rotating portion, and that way it will not really require a counterweight on the back. I will also probably not make it rotate 360 degrees because there really isn't much space back here with all of that new motor stuff. And yes, I just have this chain sitting here for now because if that is on the floor and you step on it, it does not feel very good. What I'm going to do right now is take all this stuff out because I plan on making all the chain go below everything like I had originally planned. So it will just come out straight out like that and hook up somewhere around this central axis. I will show what I've done here before I put the paneling back on. I've basically just made these gears like they used to be and there it is, or there's the second joint, and the third joint is back there. And they were like this probably in episode 5, I think, and then I ended up changing them for the new robot arm design. But I will be doing it like this right now, and it's nice because these linkages were already designed to have this chain go in between them, so I didn't have to change anything with that. So it just goes straight back. And I ended up, of course, taking out the whole thing that was here and it's back there right now until I take it apart since I won't be needing to make the chain that way anymore. Here I have part of the robot arm finished so some major changes that I'm making from the first version of this which I did in episode 5 was I'm making it be really tall so it goes all the way up to the support beam right here and I'm hoping that this makes it stable without needing to have a counterweight behind it. This will allow it to save space and be easier to rotate. And when I make the next joint it will be right here and it will have a similar structure to this that goes all the way up to that point. So that part will also be really tall and not require a counterweight like it used to. I am also making these joints be controlled with a larger gear at the bottom and I think that will be a lot better because it is really stable especially because I am holding the gear down on the spokes of the gear rather than at like this hole right here which is how it is usually done and that makes it be very stable there's no flexibility there at all so it gets held down in the back and right in there and I already have the chain for the this joint hooked up so it goes just straight out from there over to here I might be able to make it faster in the future but for now I'm just doing a small gear to the larger gear the chain for the other two joints is just going to come into here and then go straight up on rods and then go across to this center point and then go across this tower into the next joint and I'm doing that instead of making go up through this axle just because that was causing problems with having say the second joint was making the first joint move even though I didn't want it to move so making them be separate like that and not going through this rod will help with the movement the arm is almost finished, so let's show it working. I've already shown the first joint, so I won't show that one again, plus it's on the other side. The second joint is right here, and it comes from the middle transmission. And it goes up the back here, and then over with a chain, 
it goes down and then it goes back and up to this uh, black gear. The only reason it has to do all this up and down stuff is because of trying to fit everything into a compact space. Is that moving? The nice thing about making the gears this way with coupling them is that they don't make these rods want to rotate and that makes the first joint stay still. Because that's the problem I had with the first version of this arm. The only reason that these joints, that this first joint is moving right now is because I'm stopping starting it really fast. And this whole thing is slightly unlevel in that direction because of the floor being unlevel and I can't really do much about that. The third joint comes from far back there and I have wheels in the middle to help support it. And it comes around here and up through there. And then it just goes across here with gears. And then it transfers to micro chain and it goes all the way out that way. The third joint is actually the hardest joint to turn, so hopefully that won't have any issues. The easiest joint is the first joint, which is kind of the opposite of what it was before. So here's everything moving together. I still have some slight adjustments to make on this arm. I think I will try to make it shorter because right now it's really tall. Most of the robot is down here, so I think it would just look better if it was shorter. However, I also want to make sure it is just as stable as it is right now, because right now it's pretty strong. I am also wanting to make it to where this can rotate a lot farther, because right now this is how far it can rotate to the maximum, because this piece is in the way of this chain. So hopefully after removing some pieces it will be able to go all the way over right to here. I made the robot arm shorter and I also added some yellow pieces here just because it makes it look more like an, an industrial robot arm. Making it shorter doesn't didn't really affect the deflection all that bad. Right now the maximum deflection is only about a quarter of an inch so I think that's just fine because I'm not planning on picking up heavy items anyhow. I did also have to lower that beam that supports the control panel. I still have to lower the one in the back. Next, it is time to run more tests and get that chain out of there. I have written a quick program just to test each joint out individually. So let's see how it works. Okay, I was expecting the third joint to move up, but it didn't. So I'll have to figure out why that didn't happen. But the other two joints seem to work as I planned. I had to adjust the reed head right there a little bit just to make it work better. And I can confirm that the third joint moves just fine. I did that off camera. So now I will make an actual program and see how it moves. So let's set it right here, and I will start the program from there. So I have also redone the arrow directions on these temporary pieces of paper. Let's start by making the second joint come this way. So the first thing you gotta do is make sure the tapes are synchronized, which they are. Second joint is right here, so the arrow that goes in that way is right here, so I will just push these down like that, and push the right head lever back up, but leave that one down. And I can start cranking this tape with that crank, and it is starting to move. It might be a little bit choppy, but that's just because of the erase modules. It shouldn't actually do that when it runs. So I will make it go all the way over to that, which is basically how far the second joint can move. And to do that, I can write it back 
and move that back and move this one back to neutral. So now if I was to crank this crank, then that wouldn't move at all since it's in neutral. Even though we only moved the second joint over, we still need to make the tapes for the first joint and the third joint go up because they need to stay synchronized and I already did that off camera. Next, let's make the third joint go up. So we will just push both of these levers like that. And sometimes you need to jiggle the crank a little bit just so that lever goes all the way. Then I can crank this tape. And there goes the third joint. And you have to be mindful also when you are cranking the tape because that tape difference gauge has gone all the way down to the bottom and so I need to start doing the other joints in order to keep everything from going too far. So with those back there, I can continue. And I guess I will just stop it right there. So I can put this one back to neutral and move that back and back to the middle. And of course now I will have to readjust the rest of the tapes just so they are synchronized. Alright, that looks good. Next we can move, let's say, the first joint in that direction. So I will do this. And there goes the entire thing. I won't move that too far over, but it can go a little bit beyond that, maybe like that, but I won't uh, risk that, risk it running into the end. So we can put that back. And of course the other tapes have to be done too. That's the uh, programming of just three of the joints individually, and I will do a little bit more off camera, and I will come back and show the whole thing running. I finished writing the program, so now is the moment of truth to see if everything works. And it didn't work. The reason it hasn't been working this whole time is because you actually have to end the program not at here but where the black pins start and that is because the first pin that I wrote wasn't even registering on the read head otherwise so that's why if you start to write the program when that is up here you have to back it down to get that first pin to actually be registered. So let's reset this and try that again. Now the problem is that the read head for the third joint is not activating like it should, even though the other ones do. It's kind of annoying that each of these read heads needs to be made differently. But I will show that right here. So you can see that the pin that was in that direction tried to activate it, but it just bounced back to the neutral position afterwards. I think I will take a break from testing for now since most of that is done off camera anyway. Right now I need to talk about what I actually want to make the robot do because I would like it not just to move around and do nothing and so I'm trying to make it to where it can pick up something like this which has a handle on it and here is the simplest kind of uh, gripper I can come up with. It basically has hooks that 
hook around the rod and then pick it up. Maybe I can get a better view. You can see it from there. And when the third joint is coming down and this is on it like that, there will be a rod that will be here to push that down or push this up which will release the object like that and the object will have a, some kind of a holder to make it stay steady wherever it needs to be placed or picked up from and in order to pick it up it's just going to slide past a rod like that and then right when it gets past it it'll do that and this item will be right where it needs to be for it to pick it up that'll be a lot easier to do when I actually get it built but I need to do a little bit more testing first to make this third joint work better. As you can see there, the whole program almost worked. It was just when the third joint tried to stop going down that it messed up. So I still need to work on the third joint reed head a little bit. And I might have to change it completely just so it works better. I know I've been jumping around a lot from one thing to the next, but that test you just saw there is the first fully successful test run of a full program. And the robot where I wanted it to end up at the end was about right here, so it kind of landed off that a little bit, but I'm not really surprised about that. So all of the transmissions and reheads worked perfectly that time. This episode is at the 20 minute mark just about, so this is the end, and I also think this is a good place to end the entire build series because the only things that I have to do don't really require much video. I still have to panel that whole storage tower area and around the control panel as well, and I also need to get the pick and place functionality finished. I didn't really do that in this episode, but it doesn't really require much explanation. I will also probably make a few more adjustments to the reed heads just in case I need to make them more accurate. I hope you guys enjoyed this series. It's been quite a long journey. I think about four months, maybe five months. And I'd like to thank everyone for all of the support on especially episode 7 when there were a lot of failures. Um, I'm glad that everyone is still into this project even when it was messing up a lot. And so thank you for sending your encouragements. As far as future projects go, I do plan on making a version 2 of this entire robot system because there are lots of things about this that I would like to get rid of, especially just the long strand of tape that has to be detensioned every time that it isn't in use. I would like to somehow figure out how to make something without that. And of course fixing the motor situation would also be good because all four of those motors having to power everything isn't really ideal. 
thanks again for watching and commenting and the final video will probably be out in within another two weeks so I will see you next time